Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and we are going to make a beautiful credit card case, and of course, a classic bifold wallet, and we are gonna have a blast doing this. Super easy on both. Now, with our bifold, we've got a veg tan and a chrome tan version in both kits. So right here, we're gonna go with a chrome tan version. The point there, ease. All I have to do is drop in a groove line, chisel line, glue our pockets in, and then sew that, and we've got a gorgeous, durable wallet. It's probably, it's probably gonna last longer than we will. It's chrome tan, so we can't really decorate this, but again, not really the point of the video. Now, we're gonna step over after that, right to our credit card case, and I love these. Little cash, credit card, and a driver's license. That slips right in my pocket. But we're gonna go with the veg tan version here. We're gonna drop in a cool little border stamp, dye antique top coat, and we're gonna finish that off with that beautiful white stitch line. Is that not a great project? Now, one great point. This also comes in the chrome tan. My point here is this, birthdays, holidays, coworkers, if we wanna pass out some gifts, we can make this version in the chrome tan in about 20 minutes. No tooling, no personalization, but nonetheless, we can knock out eight or 10 of these in an evening. All right, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or look below, we've got links there, take you straight to our website. Now, like I mentioned, we're coming from kits, so we don't really need to make a pattern, but nonetheless, Let's step over here, look at our pieces and parts, and there's a trick to a bifold that always throws everyone the first time they make one. We'll knock that out as well. Nice, we are laid out and ready to go. Very organized, cool. Now, on our bifold, the one thing that's a trick here, and I get this question or this comment all the time, we've got our exterior leather, then we've got our liner. The problem is, is when we line that up, we're always short. That's because we need some bend there. If we didn't have that, and that was cut exact to size, every time we bend that, I can almost hear that leather compressing. What it's going to do is compress whatever's in here, and it's going to bow out our front. We don't want that. We want a little extra room in there. So therefore, what we'll do, sew one end down to the end of our pocket, then we'll gather that in the center and sew the other side. That'll give us some good, some good room there for a fold. Now, when we jump over to our Veg Tan credit card wallet, well, it's as simple as that. That is ready to go. Now, this is the version we're going to work on, but always, there's the chrome tan version, super simple, with a beige thread, looks great. And of course, we could always drop in the standard basket weave, doesn't that look clean and tight? Very cool, sky's the limit on decoration, but again here, let's keep it simple. So now, let's step over to the main table, and we're going to add our groove line in. Now, we're going to use an adjustable groover. It's one of my favorite tools. It's really going to dress up our edge. We've got a cutting head right here and a guide arm. Now, I've got this set at 1 8 of an inch and I've got that marked because to me, 1 8 of an inch in is a perfect width for a stitch line. If it gets too far in there, in my opinion, it starts to look cheap and if it's too close to the edge, it's not gonna be a solid stitch line. Now, with this, super easy tool to pick up. What I'm going to do is put my guide arm right next to the edge of my leather. I'm gonna drop the cutting point down on that and I'm gonna give it just a little bit of counter counterclockwise pressure. There we go. Okay, easy enough. So we're gonna sink our chisel line in that for our stitch line. It's gonna look very consistent. But I use this as well on every edge, even if I'm not sewing, because it just makes it look very professional and very finished. There we go, looks good. But also too, we wanna be careful. Thicker leather, not such an issue, but when we jump down here, we don't wanna add so many grooves in there that that edge becomes a tab. All right, so one more point here. Let's start right here. I'm going to groove the front side of the card case, but I'm not going to groove the back side because we'll glue these together and we're going to chisel that line. But it's almost impossible to get our chisel completely straight so it, comes, it goes through one groove line and comes out the other. The point there is that we'll have a groove line and our stitch line is going to be just a little bit inside or outside that and that's gonna look terrible. Without that, it's gonna look just like it's a clean straight line. All right, so let's jump over to our main body, guide arm against the edge and let's just groove. And there we go, coming around that last point. Okay, that looks pretty good. Take that little tab off, we will Get that off, there we go. Okay, so our veg tan grooved and ready for the next step. 
So let's set that aside. Now, let's jump over to our, our chrome tan. With this, I'm going to groove all sides on my face, but right here on my, on my liner, just the top edge, because that will be glued on the back. We'll have a stitch line there. And then our pockets. I'm simply going to do the angled cut and the edge cut with my groove. And the groove line on our liner, very nice. There we go. Okay, I love that contrast. Doesn't that look good? Nice edge. Now, we're ready to glue, but before we do that, let's step over to our quartz. We're going to drop in this very cool border stamp. Simple, but gorgeous. Now, the first thing we need to do when we're stamping veg tan, about 90% of veg tan requires water. We're casing our leather. So I'm simply going to wet my leather. Now, this is a two to three ounce. So just about any amount of water we put on this is going to be too much. So what we need to do is wet our leather complete. Now, one trick here, even if I'm, I'm only stamping one small corner on a project, I wanna wet the entire panel, even a big portfolio, that will alleviate the risk of water lines if I'm going to use a lighter dye. So let's add just a little more water to that. Very nice. Now notice how that consistent, but it's got a nice rich chestnut color to it. So let's do this. Let's give this, it's a thin leather. So let's give this about five minutes to dry. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We've given that just a bit. So let's do this. We're gonna use a vayner and a continuous mule's foot. So, to be symmetrical, let's start down in our corners. I'm going to take my mule's foot and I'm going to put it just inside my groove line. There we go. Okay, notice, not much pressure and that really gets a good impression. We need to be careful here. Again, two to three ounce. Now, all told, the point to nice tooling is not necessarily depth, it's cleanliness. All right, so let's drop back over here, drop that stamp in. There we go. Okay, one at each corner. Now, again, all manner of design possibilities just with stamps, just those combinations. But this, we're just keeping it simple. So I'm going to take a vayner and I'm going to butt the corner right in the edge of my mule's foot and I'm going to bring that right down almost, almost on top of my groove line, but I'm going to have just a little bit of room there. There we go. Good stamp. Now notice I can see every detail in that stamp. When we hit that with an antique, that's really gonna stand out for us. All right, let's do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Okay, now, good point here. Notice I'm a little weak on this side of my stamp. It's easy enough, I can feel that sit back down in there. There we go, I can lean my tool a little towards me, and there we go, okay? Let's drop in our mule's foot. And one more vayner that just fits in there perfectly. Okay, good start. So now let's work our way up each side. Corner of my stamp, right there in the corner of the mule's foot. Here we go. All right, you know what? Let's save some time. Let's just flip that around. Do the same on the other side. All right, little heavy on one end. This is a very thin leather. I gotta be careful there, okay? So let's keep moving in this direction, right up to our point and see where we come out. And my last stamp, there we go. All right. Well, you know what? It's simple, but doesn't that look great? Absolutely perfect? No, it's not. I'm a little bit heavy and a little bit light here and there. But when we fill in some dye, and some antique and a top coat, we're the only people that will see that. It's gonna make us crazy. But we're the only ones that'll see that on our projects. All right, so we need to give this, even though it's thin leather, Let's give that about an hour and a half, maybe two hours dry time. Then let's jump to the other end of the table, add dye, antique, and a top coat. All right, set up, ready to dye. Now, first and foremost, dyeing does not have to be expensive, messy, or time consuming. First off, we tend to dye later in the project where we've got holes and whatnot. I can simply make a small hook and drag that through my dye. We don't here. We're doing this much earlier in the process so therefore, we're simply going to use our hands, but we're going to dip dye. We can use daubers, sponges, airbrush, absolutely, but to me, this is the most consistent, easiest way to go. We can do that because we're using a pro dye. Now, it's an alcohol carrier, but it's an oil-based dye stuff, makes all the difference in the world. 
Now, when we antique, it's going to darken a little bit. We'll add a top coat on top of that. That's going to darken a little bit. So we're going to start with a light brown. That's going to get us down to about a medium brown, but it's going to be beautiful. All right, so let's take our project, and I'm simply going to drop one end in. Get that good and soaked with dye. There we go. All right, tap that on our edge. And when we lay that aside, let's take a cotton rag and just wipe off the excess. We're going to jump over here, do the same thing. That is going to be beautiful, absolutely. Tap that on the edge. Let's don't let that drip on our previous piece. We're going to rub off that excess oil or that excess dye. And no kidding, we're going to walk away. Watch this. These are going to be beautiful, completely consistent. It's going to look like it was dyed at the tannery. So let's give this with oil dye on an average day, average humidity. I need to give this about two hours to dry. So let's let that dry, come back, and we'll add our antique. All right, ample drying time. Let's take a look at our dye. Is that not beautiful? Again, clean, consistent, easy and outcome. That's all we're looking for. Now, we're going to step over to an antiquing. One quick note, though. Right off the bat, when we dye, I'm going to drop down a plastic bag to protect my work surface. But when dye hits this, it will pull, get slippery, makes a mess. So let's just drop some inexpensive packing paper, whatever you've got. If we make a mess, wad it up, throw it away, we're out nothing. If we don't, fold it, use it next time. And right here, a funnel and a paper towel and our, our bin is clean enough to die again. All right, so we're stepping over to an antique. This can be a mess. Now, the water-based have never worked for me, but the fibings works like a charm every time you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, let's do this. We don't want this to wrap around the back of our project. It's not like dye. It's not going to wick. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of painter's tape, and I'm going to run that right to the edge, and we'll trim that off. And there we are. Okay, we don't have to trim those spot on accurate every time. We just don't want this to wrap around to the back of the project. All right, this is more of a paste. So we're going to use a dauber because I want to get this down into all my stamps. So let's get some on there. And again, yeah, this can be a mess. So let's drop this in, paying special attention to get that work down into our stamps. Looking good thus far. And let's cover this, also hitting our groove lines. There we go. All right, let's take a rag. And I tell you what, this is the last stop for a rag in my shop. All right, there we go. Well, that looks good. We can still clean a little bit there. And now let's go ahead and hit our edges. There we go. All right, now if we don't get that perfectly on our edge, that's okay because we're going to come back with a gum trag to slick our edges down, and that too will darken the leather. Okay, so those look good. Now, again, for the next number of steps, we're going to do a step, let it dry, do a step, let it dry, but our outcome is going to be gorgeous. So let's just set those aside, let those dry. I might give these about maybe 45 minutes, and in fact, right here, I might just try to get a little more antique down into those stamps. All right, given our antique ample dry time, looks good, a little bit darker. Now, an antique too, it will fill in or highlight natural blemishes or range marks in our leather as well, which again, part of the antiquing process. Now we're going to step over to a leather balm. This is a top coat. It's not a sealant, but it's a top coat. It's going to give us a nice gloss, but also it's going to enrich in our dye color. Now I've got two rags, so I'm going to technically call one wet, which it really isn't wet, but that's going to have my top coat on it. And I'm going to apply that lightly. Then I'm going to jump over to a dry rag and I'm going to buff that. And this will be beautiful. So let's go a little sparingly there, but get full coverage in one pass. All right, set our wet rag aside. Now let's start to buff. Now this always freaks me out a little bit because it's going to go very matte on me. But given about a dozen strokes, give or take, back and forth, we're going to start to see that really pretty gloss come through. Now, it's going to be a little dark to start with, but it will dry out and lighten up nicely. Very nice. 
Look at that. Look at that beautiful gloss. Very cool. Okay. So I'm going to knock out this piece same way. And we're going to give that about 15 or 20 minutes to dry. Okay. We have got ample dry time there. Couldn't be happier with the outcome on both pieces. Love the dye, the antique and the top coat. All right. So with the Atom Wax, the leather balm with the Atom Wax, no ventilation required. Actually smells good. Looks great. All right. Next step, we're going to jump over to our main table, glue both wallets together. Therefore, that sets us up to add a chisel line in. Now, when we're gluing this, we can certainly go with the white glue, the Leathercraft cement, and I love it. But to me, it's a little bit messy when we're doing this because this contact cement, we're going to drop it on both sides. When we stick that together, it's going to stay. I'll drop a couple of clips on that just to keep it there, but it's much easier than the white glue. So with this, we're going to add glue to our front side. But right here, we've got a little bit of overlap there. There we go. Right there, and I don't want glue up there. So what I want to do is take my pen, and let's just make a small mark inside, so we don't see it, but inside of the top of our flap. Because the glue doesn't have to go right to the end. But secondly, too, with the glue, its only purpose here is to hold us together until we get our chisel line in. Now, the contact cement, we carry both the, the barge, top notch, and then the S18. And I like the S18 too, but the cool thing about it comes in a smaller batch. All right, so all I need to do is I'm going to try to hit about one quarter inch inside my edge. Now, if we get some glue in here and it sticks together, when we're, when we're finished, when this is sewn, we can drop our square down in there and break any glue out that we need to. Oh, look at that. We've already made a mess. All right, I'll get that. Open glue on the table, we got to be cautious. But what I can do is just put that right at the edge of my table. There we go, and I can brush right off the edge. Now, with this, I, it's not really a big issue to get glue on the side, but I'd prefer not to. Like with our chrome tan, that would leave a darker spot, and I don't want that. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to come up the other side. Okay, there we go. So easy enough on that. Now let's do this. I've got a rag right here while we're at it. Let's get that out of our way. There we go. All right. Now we've got a top coat on this. So if a little glue gets on the face, it'll just peel right off. But now on the back side, I need to remember to go up to my marks and no further. But also too here, I'm not going to add a glue across the throat. So right to my edge and let's just add some glue there. And up to our mark. Okay, good. Now with contact cement, we need to let that sit for about five minutes. And then once we adhere that, it will stick nicely. All right, given that about five minutes to dry, let's do this. I'm going to drop that corner right on that edge. There we go. That looks good. Double check around our bottom. Looks like we're a little bit off there. So straighten that. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Now I would typically clip that. But in all honesty, I don't think we need a clip. And again, the glue's just there long enough to get a stitch line in. Okay, this piece looks good, ready to add a chisel. Now, when we jump over to this, this is a little more complicated. We're going to bring out our, our cutting board because it's hard to see this leather on my cutting surface there. Now, first thing we're going to do is drop in our pockets on top of our liner. And we're just going to glue these in just like we did over here. So again, let's make a small mark inside and down here inside. Same on this side. And there we know where our glue needs to end. Okay, so just like the other piece, going to add glue down to this point, from this point up to here, and on our pockets, just on our outside edges where we've got our round corner. Okay, given that some time to dry, let's lay our pockets in. Square those up on the corners. Now we're gluing to a top grain. It's not always the best bet, but again, the glue's there just long enough for us to get a stitch line in. And also too, if a little bit wraps around, as it doesn't contact other glue, it'll just roll right off. All right, so let's press that down. Now we might just want to give that a little bit to dry, but let's look at our pattern. Now with this, what we have is our face, but we're going to be sewing from our front, our chisel's going to go through the leather from the front, and I'll explain that here in a minute. So therefore, we need a couple of marks on this. 
Now, this is my pattern. It's a little, little bit rougher. Not the pristine patterns we started with, but what I want to do, first off, where are my pockets going to start? So I simply need to drop in my pattern, I make an ink line, and then I can drop in a little awl mark, so therefore I can transfer that over to my leather, and I know where my pockets start, because we're going to start here, sew all the way around and come back to here. Now, that means we're going to need a couple more marks or measurements here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's mark that. There we go. Okay, easy enough. Now let's flip this over because when we lay this in, we're basically going to glue the same thing. We're going to glue from the inside of our pocket up to the inside of our liner. So therefore, let's go ahead and just make a small mark there, a small mark there. Okay, so that's our glue line from mark to mark. We don't want glue in between because we're going to have a fold there or a bend. So lay this on, scoot it to the other side. So make a mark there. That's the end of my, my pocket. And then right up here, that's the end of my liner. Okay, so same thing again. What I'm going to do on my face is I'm going to glue from mark to mark, mark to mark, and then back here, I've got some marks already right there. That's the end of my pocket. There's the end of the other pocket. So I'm going to glue from the end of the pocket to the top of the liner, into the pocket to the top of the liner. This may sound a little confusing, but you'll see where we're going with this. Okay, so we've got glue on both sides, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and take one side and press that down. Oop, let's get right to the end, square that to our end at our corner. There we go. Now we can do this one side at a time, but there's really no need with the contact cement. Okay, let's get that clean and tight right on our edge. Looks good. All right, let's press that down. Very good. Now, on this other side, let's just let that stay. Let's go ahead and drop in a clip because we're going to add a little pressure here. Now, we, we don't want a clip that bites so hard that it's going to leave an impression in the leather, but an inexpensive clip typically works fine. All right, let's come around. Now, here's the confusing part. Let's draw that down to this end. There we go. Okay, that looks good, and it feels like we've got a good bond on that. Let's go ahead and clip that. And let's flip that around, clip that down, sit for me, there we go. And then let's press that together right down to the end of the pocket. And you can see it's going to bend the leather, no problem. Let's bring that right in there. Okay, ready for a chisel line here. Now let's go ahead and leave our clips on this. We're gonna step over to our quartz, take both of our wallets, drop in a chisel line, and thus far, these look great. Now let's start with our credit card wallet. This is the easiest one. Now our chisel line is half of a clean, consistent stitch line. I'm going to use a five stitch per inch flat chisel. It's my favorite because to me, that's the perfect spread. A four per inch, the holes are enormous. Six and seven, they really start to stack. So five per inch to me looks great. Now with our chisel, what I wanna do is I'm going to drop my chisel in my first time I'm going to start this right at this incoming groove line. Drop my chisel right there. The rest of the chisel, I'm simply going to drop it in my groove line. And I can actually feel that sit down in there. There we go. Okay, now let's remove our chisel backward and forward. I don't want to go left and right. Super high quality. Not terribly worried about bending a tine. But the problem is, so when we're down here and we're trying to get through three levels, if we go left and right, we're really going to ream this hole out on the front, and I don't want that. Okay, next step. First time, last hole. That's going to keep my stitch line very consistent. I'm going to drop my other end right in there. There we go. Okay, let's work that out. Now we're coming down to our corner. It's too much for all five there. So let's back two times into our existing holes, and we can always jump down to a chisel with less tine, okay? With this, I'm going to take my two tine, I'm simply going to drop that in and roughly press it in so I can see where my next tine hole would be. Therefore, that's gonna keep that very consistent. Jump down to a single tine, okay, easy enough. Let's mark that again, right there. Okay, I know exactly where my next chisel needs to drop to stay consistent. 
So let's drop that right there. There we go. All right, I've got chisels on the inside. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna work my way up around in exactly the same manner. And last chisel, okay, coming up. I'm a little long for four, so let's back up to three and drop that in. Very nice, okay. So our chisel work, easy enough, clean and straight. Now, let's jump over here. With this, a little bit different. What I'm going to do is drop this onto the edge of my table, therefore I can let that bend hang off. There's my mark, that's my first chisel hole. So let's take our chisel, drop it right on that mark, and right here, we need to make sure we're doing our best to go straight through. I don't want to lean that chisel too far in. So let's remove that. It's a little harder, but still easy. First time, last hole. Here we go. Okay. Thus far, well, that looks great. Now, I'm going to work my way all the way around and back to my mark right there. Now, we'll see this often. Say an edge of a, the edge of a leather. The edge of some leather. This doesn't really have two ply, but we're, we'll see a stitch line there anyway. Really, that's to shore up that edge to give the leather a little more strength. All right, so we're gonna move on. It, again, exactly the same fashion as our credit card wallet. And our last chisel, but let's take a look. Looks like we could use one more tine there. So first tine, last hole, let's drop in the two. And there we are. Okay, we are sewn, our glue held out for us nicely. Now, we are going to hand sew both our credit card wallet and our bifold, and that is gonna be super easy, and we are that close to being done. All right, hand sewing, this is super easy. Now, I'm gonna lead with my left, the front of my, my project to the left side mainly, so the camera can see that. But the point there is I'm going to lead from my top needle, or from the front side, because if we think about it, this hole is funnel shaped, so therefore needle's gonna fall right into it. On our back side, the bottom, that hole is actually going to pucker. So we're going to lead from our right, okay? With our thread, I want about four times my length because that's way more thread than I need. But I don't want to get all the way around to the other end and have two little nubs that I'm going to try to tie a knot with. Uh, thread, incredibly inexpensive nowadays. In the old days, flax, sew six inches, tie a knot. Sew six inches, tie a knot. What a headache. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Also, too, I'm going to equalize out my thread. Therefore, if one side is a little more than the other and I get to the end, it's no problem. I still have plenty of thread. All right, so we're going to do what's called a saddler stitch. It's a back and, back and forth thread or back and forth stitch. One thing, I don't want to sew down one side and then back the other. Number of reasons. First off, as I come back, I run the risk of splitting a thread in every hole. But secondly, I'm pulling left, then right, then left. That's not gonna give me even tension. The way we're going to do it, we're gonna pull both sides at the same time. Our tension is going to be perfect, okay? Needles, hand sewing needles. No sharp point, our holes are pre-punched. Easy enough, all right? So, with my thread, what I wanna do is thread with two needles, one needle at both ends of my thread, and I'm going to draw this out. If I've got a really long project, I don't wanna have to keep going way out each time. So therefore, I can draw my thread in, choke up on that, and then as I move through the project, I can pay that out as I need it. Okay, easy enough. Lead from the front, okay? First hole, one needle. Let's bring that through, and we're gonna equalize that out, okay? Second hole, I wanna lead with my front, coming from the front because that, that's so easy to find that hole. Open it up a little bit, and then my second needle comes in. I'm going to push that about halfway through, make an X, move my fingers from the back of the needle to the tip. There we go. We have a stitch, all right? From both sides now, I'm pulling tension. We don't want to pull too much because that's going to give us a ripple, but we'll quickly get the feel of exactly how much tension we need per stitch. There we go. That looks good. Now, as a sewing machine goes, this is not nearly as fast. But you'll see, now that I'm starting to sew, I can move right along. I can probably do maybe one and a half inches a minute. So if you think about it, that's not really bad. Plus, we can hand sew on our kitchen table 
or our coffee table. All right, so what I'm going to do, look at that. Boy, that already looks good. Nice, clean, consistent stitch. I'm going to sew all the way around. Then when we, when we get over here, we're actually going to come through one ply. Therefore, we'll have a hidden knot. All right, we're coming down to our last two holes now. I think, in all honesty, sewing this took about five minutes. All right, so we're on our last hole. What I'm going to do is from this side, I'm going to go through one ply and come out. And then from the back side, same thing. I'm going to come in from that hole through to my inside. Let's pull that down. Now we're going to do a square knot. So all I need to do is right over left, circle around, and then let's draw that down in there. Nice. Okay, now left over right and draw that down in there. All right, easy enough. Now we're going to take our knife. I'm not going to cut through the let through the thread. I'm going to lift the thread over my knife and therefore that cuts it clean and even and our knot is now hidden down in there. Well that looks great. We have one more step. We're going to hammer down our stitch line but before we do that let's jump over to our bifold. Now with this too same set of rules. About four times my length maybe a little bit more because I'm a little bit thicker here and that's going to chew up as much thread vertical as horizontal. So let's start right here. There we go through our first hole, easy enough. Now I do want to choke up on my thread some because I've got a good bit more length there. There we go, okay. Now we again we have more thread than we need but that's just in case. Second hole, lead from my face and right through the back. There we go. And now with our tension here, we're going to have to vary our tension because we're going from a three ply to a two ply to a one ply. So we need to be a little bit cautious there, but we'll pick that up no problem. And you'll also notice too, your fingers after you've started to sew a little bit will almost automatically know where that next hole is and same from the back. We can really get some good speed hand sewing and no machine involved. And we're coming down to our last two holes. Very nice. This looks good thus far. Couldn't be happier with the edge and the stitch line. Okay, just like we did on our credit card wallet, but a little bit differently on the inside, we're going to come through two ply. Bring that out. Okay, and from our face or our exterior, we're going to come through one ply. Nice. Let's pull that lengthwise. There we go. All right, and again with a square knot. We're going to right over left, circle around. Let's draw that down in there. In fact, it helps if we can get our pinky down in there. Really get that knot buried. Okay, now left over right. And again, let's see if we can't get that down in there. We certainly could come in from the other side. There we go. Okay, now again, I'm not going to cut the thread. I'm going to, I'm going to pull the thread across my knife blade. There we go. All right, let's take a look at this, see what this looks like. Well, very cool. Couldn't be happier with that stitch line. In all honesty, across our top, I could be happier with that, but we're just going through one ply. Now, we're still going to hammer down our stitch line. It's going to make it very consistent, close up our holes. But again, maybe next wallet, I might just sew my edges or my pockets. But nonetheless, both of these look really good. All right, let's step over to our quartz and hammer down our stitch line. Now again, let's start with our credit card wallet. This will be most noticeable. Now we're going to use a tack hammer. This is a great way to go because it's got a small striking head. We can always use a mallet. I just don't want to hit it at such an angle that I leave an impression in the leather. So we're going to start over here and lightly tap down our stitch line. There we go. So we can already see a difference here. Our threads spread out a little bit. Our holes are closed. But the biggest point, because we dropped in a groove line, when I run my finger across that, I can feel a little bit of the thread, but that adds great protection. Going to keep that from snagging or breaking. And there we go. Okay, looking good. One more step on this. Let's add a little gum track. Now, we can certainly slick our edges with water. In fact, water is kind of cool because it'll wick in a little bit 
and it'll actually darken that edge somewhat, giving it a very rustic look. But to me, the gum drag is quick, quick to burnish and extremely durable. If we get a little wrap around on the front or the back, that will just wipe right off. But we want to be a little careful nonetheless. Okay, there we go. Now let's take a rag. Just going to kind of wipe off the excess there. And then with my slicker, I've got the smallest groove here. So I'm going to drop that in and just run that back and forth maybe a dozen times, give or take. And we're going to start to see a really clean, rounded, glossed edge. There we go. I can already feel that. Let's try that larger groove a little bit and then back down. Now, pressure is not really the point here. It's more heat and friction. I don't want to press down so hard that I develop a lip across the front of the leather. But there we go. That looks good. Again, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but that's gotten rounded and slicked and it actually feels smooth to the hand. Now, what we can do too, I can always lay this on the edge of my leather or my, my quartz if I have enough room there. But let's jump back here, go right back to that center groove. And now I can rub that. That gives the project or the panel a little extra body, makes it a little easier to hit my corners. So let's run around those corners, make those nice and rounded, and then across there. Now the throat, I'm not necessarily going to, going to burnish across here. That's just too thin to do. But boy, that looks good. Very nice project, very clean. All right, let's step over. Only one step here because we're not going to use gum track on our chrome tan. But let's at least hammer that stitch line down, close our holes, spread the stitch out a little bit and sink it down into that groove line. And there we go. Okay, that looks good. Well, you know what? Clean wallet. That looks great. What a great gift. Extremely durable. Whoever you give this to is going to think about you every time they pull that out of their pocket. Two great kits. Two great projects, had a lot of fun on both, but again, leather is just elements and they are all easy to learn. Simple to hand sew, very cool, looks just like a machine stitch. But our stamping, our antique, our top coat, that is a classic piece of leather work. I hope every bifold, trifold, credit card wallet you make is gorgeous. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.